call this meeting of the Wayne County Commissioners to order. Any additional uh, corrections uh, to the minutes? Not the chair would so entertain a motion to approve the minutes as corrected. Move for approval. Second. Second. Please call the roll. Denny Burns. Aye. Marianne Butters. Aye. Ken Powell. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, we have claims of 42920 in the uh, total amount of $268,125.74. Chair would so entertain a motion to approve the claims. Move for approval. Second. Uh, please call the roll. Denny Burns. Aye. Marianne Butters. Aye. Ken Pals. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Um, Ron, looks like you're up. Got about four things just to advise you of uh, that I think you've received. First of all, I've, I've done a redraft of the uh, proposed lease with the uh, currently at least the Wayne County uh, Health Center uh, Inc. And uh, right. that is in their hands as well as ours for review and comments. So if you take a look at it, like I said in my email, it's 31 pages of text, but you might want to just go through the... I liked your shorter version, my eight cliff, pages. My <laughs> cliff notes of the issues that were uh, raised by the health center in reviewing the first draft. And then there's a little, several deletions that are, you know, since that first draft was done in December, things have settled out a little bit. We now know that there's been the award of the, uh, to, uh, for the, uh, service area competition to well care and so take a look at that uh, I also distributed a proposed consultants agreement with Bob Warner I had one typo in the first page other than that he was he texted me he's okay with it I don't know if you had any questions did or you concerns. see the one this this morning of the address change yeah that was the typo that was the typo okay all right all right um, I mean I don't know if there's any urgency but his last day is uh, May the 8th, so we've got uh, one more meeting. Another one more meeting, right. So if you want to take a look at that, and then if there are any questions on it, he, like I say, he's reviewed it, but maybe you haven't. All right. Uh, uh, Denny or Mary Ann, do uh, uh, have any questions about uh, Mr. Warner? I've read it. I think it's okay. We should approve it. Mary Ann, do you have any uh, comments or questions on uh, Bob's uh, consulting contract? Oh, it says we've uh, agreed, and I see no reason to hold it. Okay. I agree. To a okay, well, the chair would so entertain a motion to uh, enter into a consulting agreement with Bob Warner, um, who is our current uh, county engineer, who um, is retiring on May the 8th, and this is a consulting agreement with uh, Mr. Warner's company. Uh, to work with us on a temporary basis until we're able to um, hire a new county engineer. So, the Chair would so entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, please call the roll. Mr. Burns. Aye. Mrs. Butters. Aye. Mr. Past. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, I've got the agreement here in triplicate. Uh, uh, Denny, you said Beth has a facsimile signature stamp for you? Yes. Yes, yes she does. Uh -huh. Do we have your permission to use and it? she has permission to sign my name with her initial. Okay, fine. Okay. All right, you both agree then we can, Denny, we can use your stamp, and Beth can sign your name and initial it then, Mary Ann. Okay, we'll, we'll yes. sign those. All right. Uh, did either one of you have any uh, questions or comments uh, currently at this time on uh, Ron's summary on the lease? I thought he did an excellent job. Loved the color coding and everything. Uh, that worked very well um, with all the changes. Yeah, it, it was just, I did a red line up and it, it was a it sea of red. There was right. no way you were going to make any head, head or tail of it. <laughs> I know I looked at your red line and I said, we changed every line on that one. <laughs> okay. If you have any comments, if not... I met with that one. Uh, 
I I had to print that out. I was I was going blind trying to read that, and I printed it out. But I ran my home computer completely out of ink. Can we have another week to review that? Oh, yeah, there's got, no. Oh, we I got mean, yeah, plenty of time. Yeah, yeah, just give me your comments. I let I let it be clear to Rick Boston that uh, this was going out simultaneously to 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 the health center folks as well as to our our, our people too. So. Council uh, got a copy of it, and so we're, we're, it, we're still in the mode of entertaining comments and questions, so absolutely no problem. The other informational item you got late yesterday, uh, and you may not have had time to take a look at it, but uh, uh, Council raised the issue uh, uh, pr probably two or a couple meetings ago about what, if anything, do we have to do in, uh, to end the collection of the 0.25% local Honestly. option special pur purpose tax that was originally levied to, to fund the construction of the uh, of the jail and uh, I've since followed up on that and I gave you a memo that indicates pretty much what we have to do and that is council itself has to adopt an ordinance uh, essentially reestablishing our other uh, lo uh, lo local option income taxes the uh, certified shares expenditure rate at one percent our economic development expenditure rate at 0.25 and then eliminating that 0.25 percent special purpose tax that has to be done uh, prior to august 31st of this year and if done by that time will become effective on october 1 of this year that means that we will have collections that will follow through july august and september, september. Uh, which okay. based upon our certified shares amount that would be a, a just a little over eight hundred thousand dollars or thereabouts I, I had the number and that eight hundred twenty three thousand okay and that is uh, that is I didn't understand that but I I talked to mr. Van Dort at the uh, Department of Local Government Finance and he said that's the way it works he said when he, originally when you enacted the tax you had to wait till the next effective date to start collecting it so uh, once you uh, rescind the tax and it goes away as it has to because the bonds will have been retired in July you get the benefit of whatever incremental run out you have until the oh, rescission man. becomes effective so I've given you my feelings I, the only thing I would say is I do not think that that those monies can lawfully be used uh, for any purposes other than the default purposes in the statute which is the maintenance rehabilitation construction of county roads highways and bridges so so those monies would not be available, in my opinion, for the, any of the uh, enhancements to the jail that the sheriff might wish to have. Yeah, okay. But that obviously would give you some uh, counsel and some funds to move forward in, uh, into... Uh, <clears throat> Couldn't have come at a better time, really. Yeah, and, and again, I, I, I made the... Our certified share amounts roughly $274,500 a month for that special purpose tax. I am assuming that we're not going to collect at that rate given the COVID-19 impact on employment. So uh, I'll talk with the auditor and we'll try to just kind of get a better idea to see where things are shaking out. Sure. Okay. So if, there, if you have any questions on that, there's really uh, next steps will be for me to get to get put together the templates for the ordinance and the notice of hearing on the ordinance. I have the, uh, the DLGF is very good about uh, reviewing your proposed ordinances and paperwork in advance so you don't make a mistake get it submitted and then find it there's something that they won't they won't accept so uh, we like I say we have until August 31st but I'll try to get the uh, the draft templates in uh, prepared uh, yet this month or yet in May <laughs> very good very good and then finally uh, we have I, I forward you a draft of the elder Bearman uh, maintenance contract that we would propose to enter into with EDC I, there's only one issue that's come come to the forefront and I've discussed it briefly with uh, Jeff Plaster and I think I, I count, uh, commissioners need to have their thoughts considered too and that is uh, they would like to extend that maintenance agreement through 2024 we've traditionally been reticent to enter into any contractual commitments uh, beyond the end of the of the uh, contract period which is this year uh, I think Jeff seemed to feel like even if they were to to uh, repeal the edit tax, there would be enough of 
consolidated edit to cover this obligation uh, that would still be available. But I throw that out there for your consideration and uh, your comments and thoughts. Uh, I guess my thinking would be, I, and I certainly don't want to speak for council, but I don't think they're looking to do away with the, no, the, I don't the tax so. so that it's going to be there. Um, so I guess I wouldn't have any problem, but that, I'd kind of leave that up to council because they'd be the one that would make that change there. Right. And uh, But um, I haven't heard any discussion at all of not doing that. And I think no. if they did, that'd be a major mistake for the community. Well, I don't, I, right. I, I don't yeah. mean to suggest there has been. It's just that, that's, you know, in the right. past we've been... We've not done you know, that. They, if they wanted to extend, enter into... If the EDC wanted to enter into an obligation to extend to be on the term of their current contract with the county, for instance, an auto lease or whatever, right. had the same thing they would there. have to come get commissioner's approval and council approval. So, so that's the only issue. Uh, if you okay. again take a look at it, if there's something there that you have a question on, I did write it by Steve Higginbotham because I wanted to make sure that I understood exactly what kind of services the county was providing directly, as well as those services that we are have been reimbursing the. Uh, EDC for and uh, I think originally it started out Bob Warner had a pretty accurate estimate uh, that we were trending at about six thousand dollars a month uh, since then it's gone down considerably to where we're I think annually looking around forty five thousand forty five fifty thousand right forty five yeah. fifty so mm -hmm. yeah so that's really all I've got at this point okay very good um, it's been busy. He has been very busy, yes. Um, Steve is uh, currently uh, with the uh, pre-bid people. He'll be here in, in just a little bit. He's getting that started. Uh, as you know, we had the uh, pre-bid. Are you just working up to any No, I'm hearing him fine. You're, in fact, getting broken up, Marianne. Were you able to hear me okay, Denny? I can yeah, yeah, I heard you, Ron. Okay. Yeah, Mary Ann, you are breaking up. Okay. Maybe my batteries. I'll change phones. But there at the end, you were doing very well there when you talked about changing your batteries. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that in a minute. <laughs> hey, Mar Mary Ann, we're kind of laughing that you're going to change your batteries, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and get you charged up so you're up to 100 percent. See, oh gosh. <laughs> oh, uh, Beth, why don't we move on to a couple of things that you have? Uh, and that'll give Steve more time because he will be here. Yeah. I think I'll just kind of park back here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now you are breaking up a little. I'm breaking up. How's this sounding? Must be the line okay, somehow. When you lock, yeah, it uh, it's breaking up. Hmm. Interesting. We'll have it checked before this afternoon. We'll have to have it checked. I have to go to a wired phone. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Beth. He switched out the conference call phone yesterday. So oh, did he? Well, this is a new. We, it is. A this is hear, a new. This we, is a new phone. We can't hear Beth. Uh, Beth, they can't hear you. Okay. Uh, is it better now? Can you hear her now? A little bit. The speaker's right here. Yeah. A little bit. Is this any better? Yes, that's better. Okay. All right. All right. So, commissioners, you signed a resolution to transfer an unneeded law enforcement car to Milton. Milton did provide a counter resolution. I do have copies of it. At this time, it's unsigned because it was passed during the Zoom meeting. So if you're comfortable with that, mm -hmm. I will ask Jack I'm Martin. Sorry, I'm, I'm not hearing that. Uh, Milton passed I'm the... sure Marianne can't hear her either. Are you able to hear me? It. Pick that up and hold it. Denny? In front yeah. of you. Yes. Now, now yeah. try it. Bass, try it now. Okay. Can you hear me now, Denny? Oh, yeah. That's oh, perfect. But... That's perfect. <laughs> Well, I've had Beth pick it up, and she's holding it right in front of her now. So. Okay. For okay, those that's that didn't perfect. hear, Milton offered their counter resolution for acceptance of the law enforcement card that we no longer need. And if you're willing to accept an unsigned copy, 
because it came from a result of a Zoom meeting, I could ask Jack Martin to work with Craig and get the transfer done, Terry Craig and get the transfer done. Absolutely, let's do this. I move for approval. Okay. Okay, uh, best call the roll. Denny Burns. Uh, yeah. Mary Ann Butters. Aye. Ken Paust. Aye. Motion carries. So last week I asked you to approve the local drug free community's funding from the Indiana Criminal Justice Institute. That was unusual. This week we actually have the breakdown of who the local partnership decided to fund. That was given to all of you by, I don't know if you got it, but it was given to all three commissioners by email. So today I have the claims, and if you've reviewed that list and you're comfortable with the funding, um, I would ask if you would not only authorize the way the funds will be distributed on behalf of the local drug-free partnership, but also authorize me to stamp Ken's name on the claims to keep him from signing about 30 claims and get them processed yet today for next week's payment. Have any questions on the allegation? Go ahead, Denny. Allegation. Chair would so entertain a motion. Okay, call the roll. Denny Burns. Aye. Mary Ann Butters. Aye. Ken Faust. Aye. Motion carries. As Mary Ann mentioned, payroll for April 24th was presented after your meeting last week. Payroll did happen, but we should mm -hmm. have an approval after the fact. Okay. Chair would entertain a motion to approve Mary Ann, so moves. Eddie Burns, second. Second. All right, Mr. Burns. Aye. Mrs. Butters. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye, motion carries. Um, wanted to remind you all, about 90 days ago, you passed a resolution saying that take-home cars for the health department would cease being take-home cars in 90 days. That day is May 5, next week. So if you would so authorize, I'll send a note to Christine Stinson reminding her that that date is coming up, and then she can communicate that with her employees who already know this is happening. They had a 90-day notice. Right. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and do that. Right, that's right. I, I we, think, we don't need a motion yep. for that. Yeah. yeah. And lastly, Christine Stinson asked to be on your agenda next week, May 6th in the afternoon. She wants to talk about the uh, syringe exchange program and its continuance. Okay. So I just wanted to run it by you before I... Uh, to fill you in on that, um, uh, Christine is going to come in uh, on the syringe exchange program. And so I did make contact with uh, uh, Mike Shipman in the prosecutor's office. If you'll recall, uh, the last time when we renewed this, Mike was unaware uh, that we were going to renew that. So I wanted him to be fully aware that she was going to come in to talk about the syringe exchange program. Uh, also um, gave Mike uh, Christine's name as the new executive director explained the changes that have taken place there that Eric is no longer that's a separate organization and so Mike was going to contact uh, Christine ahead of time and so that they could have a discussion and if there was any data or questions that he wanted uh, Christine said she'd be happy to get that information so we should have a good discussion on May the 6th on the uh, syringe exchange uh, program Okay, Beth, do you have anything else? Um, okay, I yeah, Marianne? don't know how much conversation you, Jet Moore and Christine, about the syringe program, but in very brief conversations, people occupied so much of their time, so both of them 
are very supportive and had full knowledge and appreciation for Wayne County's commitment to harm reduction. In fact, uh, Christine was so impressed with how Wayne County had picked up the mantle and was among the eight counties in Indiana, and she said that helped contribute to her um, attraction to Wayne County and contributed to her decision to make the uh, major move um, from Plymouth to, to Wayne County. So I am really pleased that she is uh, of our Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Beth, do you have anything else? I don't. Uh, at this time, we'll take a recess until um, Steve gets here and then we'll reconvene again. <coughs>
opponents have not gone over it for any errors. Sometimes people will patients missing you know, errors. That, um, I just like to have eyes on it. I haven't really had an opportunity to print it out. I'm cut out of ink, unfortunately. I'm going to have to see that in hard copy in order to proof it properly. And I ran out of ink, so... Um, um, how long do I have to uh, put my eyes on that before she has to release back to the newspapers? Well, I, um, I, geez, there is a schedule, but I don't have that in front of me. Steve, do you have it in front of you with dates? I don't. Uh, I'll go ask her real quick. We'll, we'll find out, Mary Ann. Uh, would you want us to bail you a hard copy today? No, I, um, I, I'm going to have to bring those thermometers in. I'm feeling there's something about this being in session that has given me a new... Uh, at least I feel 100% better than I did at 9.30, so hmm. uh, I'm going to bring those monitors in, and I think I'll be at that 1.30 meeting. I, Mary I Ann? I missed that departmental meeting. Mary Ann, I would suggest um, this is two, so two, this is two uh, weeks I'll in a row for you. Mary Ann, I would suggest you stay at home. This is two weeks in a row. We don't need to take any chance whatsoever that you need to stay at home. We will survive another week, and... Uh, uh, you okay, may be well, feeling a little better. That but list out. I'm done. <laughs> when uh, someone delivers those thermometers, you could do a, uh, an exchange and then you could yes. do a copy of the list. I'll trade you four thermometers for a list. How's that? All right, I'll, I'll have it at the uh, security station. I test wrote each of the thermometers. Right, okay, that's fine. <laughs> We just don't want to take any chances whatsoever. Oh, yes. I'll drop the highway department. Okay. Because I've been promising Mike a thermometer for a long time. Mike's doing pretty well. Oh, yeah. we've got a cat fight going on. Can you hear right. that? Um, no. <laughs> no, we can't hear the cat fight. No. I'll, I'll drop off the thermometer and uh, detail list. I sure appreciate it. Okay, we'll have it there in an envelope and... Uh, and we'll sanitize the outside of the thermometers that you're bringing in. Okay, it'll be there. All right. Uh, Beth, anything else? I have nothing. Yeah, I've got six more coming, and I've got uh, four delivered. Okay. I'm trying to get more quiet. They are scared of every trying to hook up, and every no touch orders in order to open up business and offices. Right, right. Very good. Okay, that's it. If there isn't anything else, we'll recess at, at this time. So we'll have everything there at the security sure. counter for you, Marianne. Okay. Oh, one thing. Uh, Kalina asked if we wanted to advertise the detail properties in Richmond as well as the working news. And we said yes. I felt that commissioners want to have properties. Stadium as well as West Wayne. That's correct. I, concur. I, I said I thought that was the measure to agree. Yeah, we'll we'll pass yeah. that on again to her in case okay. she didn't get that info. I, if, yeah. if Steve could carry that uh, message back. Uh, is Steve still there? Yeah, Peter, we're hearing you. We okay. will we will pass that on. Uh, Bob Warner had a question for us. I think we need to get back to him regarding the economy room bridge and the one and three quarter inch uh, uh, gap. I think we need to concur with Bob that we don't want to incur great expense over one and three quarter inch. Um, I think we need to get back to him and let him know our feelings on that. It's my feeling that that one and three quarter inch is not worth the expense um, to correct. That's that correct. His feeling that it's not very discernible. We need to go forward without spending a lot of money to correct that minor discrepancy. Just Mary, Mary Ann, just send an email back to Bob saying that you agree. I already sent him one saying that I agreed that that wasn't going to make that much difference. Yeah. I think he's going to get a comfort letter from the uh, from the uh, from the design firm that it will not have any functional. Right. Collectively agreed that minor 
discrepancy. Maybe it could be dealt with with landscaping or something that um, will not be discernible right. to the naked eye. We all agree, yes. Okay. Denny, you got anything? Nope, I do not. Okay. All righty. Thank you both. Appreciate it. Well, and we'll work on these phones. I, I, I just called this morning session. We won't be making policy this afternoon, right? Because the governor is going to have to announce on Friday, May 1st. No, Marianne, we're not. The governor's announcement is going to be on Friday before we make policy. Do you disagree? Marianne, we're not making any policies this afternoon. We're just having a general discussion uh, for employees to bring up any ideas they have, uh, like the steez guards and stuff like that that they're interested in. That's all we're going to do this afternoon. So we're not making any policies or any votes on okay, anything. I did respond to the report who wanted to forward with some construction and carpentry. I did respond to her saying that we really were not interested in making permanent instruction uh, at time, especially going through the building, that nothing permanent of interest appears in to answer this. Right. I, I did see I did see your email back to her on that. That would be um, temporary for germ control at this point. Uh, I did respond to her um, her bids, that we were not making bids for construction, that we were looking to provide um, temporary control at this point. I think I thought I did not have. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. The only thing Paul is just not interested in taking bids for construction for this temporary move at this time. I hope that was okay. That's fine. Yeah, that was good. Okay. Yeah. Anything That's else? The only policy kind of thing I, I responded to, but I'm really glad um, that we're having this meeting to let them express a little. We're just going to <coughs> take comments and uh, listen to that, but I think uh, my feeling to listen to the governor yesterday is that I think he's going to do quite a lot of relaxing of the uh, um, shelter at home guidelines. I I really really our hospitals are in the uh, uh, really capable manner and I think that he's going to do a lot of station on front. Well, I think you're probably accurate. We'll just have to wait to see what the governor says, and then we can react to that once we know exactly what he's going to suggest. Yes. I think we have to take what he's doing on Friday before we can, obviously, counties can't take independent action well beyond what he's taking on Friday. That's correct. We can always take a stronger reaction than what he suggests. County can always do that. Yes. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Uh, to explain to you what she was talking about on there, it, uh, we had two of our departments that already had sent in some suggestions to us about sneeze guards for their particular department. And so we asked them if they could get some information. And so those departments did go out, they got some information for us on different types of sneeze guards and got a couple of bids from a couple of folks if we uh, did a custom sneeze guard in their particular area. And that's what she was talking about. And that she had sent an email back to them telling them that we were not interested in permanent construction in an area for a sneeze guard on there. That at this time we were looking to do something temporarily on that and that's what she was talking about on there and the other part of what she was talking about is the fact that the AARP phone call that she was on uh, the state of Indiana which we were already aware of that is going to provide adequate uh, PPE equipment for all the voter uh, folks that are working at the polls for us and we were certainly aware 
uh, that that was uh, going to happen on there. And uh, so that's what she, I'm sorry you couldn't hear on that. If, if I didn't know what she was talking about, I couldn't have heard it either, but that, that's what it is, yes. So, any other things, Steve, Beth? No. Nope, nope, okay, that's it. We'll recess till 1.30. But let me first uh, go back to a few things. The sheet that I passed out to you, and for those that uh, are on the telephone, I passed out an information sheet that I thought, uh, depending how close you follow the COVID-19, as to what has transpired over the time. And, and on this sheet, as you can see, there's been 56 major disaster declarations across uh, the United States. And I won't read all this, you can take it with you. You can see uh, uh, how much money, the $5.7 billion and the 89 Airbridge flights, and I'll talk about the Airbridge flights in a little bit here. And, but the interesting part to me has been the critical supplies and how many have been shipped. And on your sheet, if you look at the face shields, there have been 7.2 million of the face shields that have been shipped around the United States and the surgical mass, 107.2 million of the surgical mass, and 626,863 uh, coveralls, and 811.9 million gloves, and 76.5 of the N95 recitators, and 15.3 million in gallons. And in uh, the testing, uh, 5.4 million, and the ventilators, and I'll talk a little more about ventilators, 11,327 that are available. And then the National Guard troops that are spread out across the United States, almost 37,000. To me, I thought those statistics were interesting as to what happened. And <coughs> as you look at the uh, uh, ventilators, there uh, been a lot of discussion about ventilators. Uh, a lot of what the uh, uh, New York folks were looking for. At one time, uh, the governor there was looking for uh, some 30,000 ventilators for uh, the New York area over there. Now let's talk for a moment about how do we get the supplies here, what we have done. Uh, we're a prime example. We have ordered quite a few things and we're still waiting to get those in. We've got one of our shipments in the other day, but I wanted to talk briefly about uh, Project Airbridge, which you may or may not be aware of but they have 110 flights that are scheduled on the Project Airbridge. This is all being handled by FEMA. Uh, the president authorized FEMA to coordinate this uh, throughout the United States and to also coordinate it with manufacturers and promotional products, uh, distributors uh, that sell products like you see here, the sell the hand uh, sanitizer as well as the mask. So far, they've completed 89 of these flights. Now, the interesting part about that is, as all of you know, everything's coming from Japan currently at this time. Or, I'm sorry, it's said Japan. I don't mean that, China. Uh, and it's taken a long time for it to get here. So what FEMA did, <clears throat> they went in and did the coordination with this air bridge and coordinated all the flights. Each flight is carrying 80 tons of PPE equipment. And those flights are scheduled throughout the United States. And let's say one of the flights comes into Chicago or one of the flights may come into Columbus. When those supplies arrive, 50-50, 50 goes to uh, the strategic stockpile and FEMA in turn determines where the hotspots are uh, throughout the United States and those supplies then are shipped to those individual cities or towns. The other 50% goes to the manufacturer a uh, person that may be selling promotional products or a medical house that would be selling the gloves. And it's distributed in their particular area. And I thought that was quite interesting. And the real interesting part, that cut eight weeks out of the supply chain. Now just think about that. By coordinating that and doing that, they cut eight weeks out. So if I think of the time when I worked with Matthew and John to order our supplies here, It'd be sometime the end of July if we had to go through the normal process where we'd ever begin to see some of the stuff come in. So 
I thought this was interesting. If you didn't know about it, I thought uh, you would like to know about that. Each one of those flights, which are paid for by FEMA, costs seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred thousand dollars per flight, depending on the equipment that's in the PPE and how much it weighs. So when you think about that, it's eight hundred thousand dollars just to get that equipment here sooner. Uh, Yesterday, for example, they had flights that came into JFK, Chicago, and, and Washington. And um, they have a team at FEMA that works uh, on the distribution throughout the United States. And every 96 hours, they update all the hot spots throughout the United States. So when one of these flights arrives, it's scheduled, then they know exactly where the distribution is going to be and where they're going to uh, to send it. And on that information I gave you about ventilators, 11,327 of those that are available now, the Strategic National Stockpile has 10,245 of those. Department of Defense has 1,082. If you look up and you look at the stats, Indiana received 100 ventilators uh, from the National Strategic Stockpile, and I thought that was quite interesting. Also, I looked up on, on the Indiana site to see exactly how many ventilators we had here in the state of Indiana. And we actually have uh, 3,189 ventilators here in the state of Indiana. We currently are using, uh, for people that we know have COVID, 8.2 of those ventilators and 11.9 in ventilators that are non-COVID. So roughly we have 79.9% .9 of our ventilators are still available in the state of Indiana. So I think that's nice to know that uh, we certainly have a stockpile if the situation gets even worse here in Indiana, which I'm hoping it does not. So, you know, as you look at all that and uh, you look at what's going to happen and what did we do here? As all of you know, we reduced our workforce by 30% and with your cooperation, uh, we sent folks home to work from home. In doing that, I think we've learned what we can and can't do from home. And in some cases, I was talking with Debbie Rice in the recorder's office yesterday and she said, you know, Ken, we've gotten so good at this. If we never came back into the office, we'd have everything recorded that needed to be recorded. And, you know, if we'd asked that maybe a year ago or even two months ago, we'd probably say, well, we can't do that. But we did, and, and I watched what the um, probation department did uh, as they had their folks all to check in. The tent they set up out on the parking lot, thinking out of the box and not bringing any of the folks into the facility here. My biggest concern has always been the safety and the health of every one of our county employees and all of those of you that have to come into the office every day. As you know, if we only got one person that got in here that really got uh, the COVID-19, it would be possible that you would have to shut this entire facility down. We certainly do not want to do that. So we're taking all the necessary steps that we can think of to be able to make sure that you're safe and anybody that comes in that you schedule an appointment with is safe also. So the closing of the annex and the closing of the courthouse, with the exception of the appointments only, has been very, very successful. And I'm sure as Christine talks to you a little later on, they'll certainly emphasize uh, that what we've been able to do in the stay at home and only do essential travel has been very, very important and it really has worked out for us. So that gives you a little bit of where we are and how we got to where we are today. So. Let's look at the future as to what is going to happen. We know that uh, the governor is going to make some changes on Friday, and we'll begin to look at that. But at the same time, we'll look at Wayne County, Indiana, and determine what we need to do in Wayne County. My worst fear is that we would open things up too soon and get people in here that would infect some of our staff and that we'd have a real problem within our facility. So some of the things that we've been looking at and talking to you folks about is that the individual needs to monitor their health, 
and you need to keep the social distancing to the six feet that we have talked about, and this is nothing new. Uh, we've been talking about that, the hand washing, that you should wash your hands. If you don't have access to uh, water, to use the 60% plus alcohol, using the hand rubs as often as possible. And if you have the slightest feeling that you're not feeling well, or you feel sick, that you stay at home. We had a case just like this this morning, where an individual was not feeling well, that got feeling a little better mid-morning, said, oh, I'm going to come in to work this afternoon. I insisted that that person not come in this afternoon, that they stay at home, because we don't want to take the chance. As you all know, people can be asystematic, and for four or five days, you could be affecting other folks, which you don't want to do, and you could feel perfectly well. So we need to be very, very uh, careful. Covering your mouth, as you can see all of us today uh, are covering our mouths in here at the same time we're staying six or seven feet apart, and that is helping. Cleaning the workplaces. I can't say enough about the employees prior to the time that we got the first wipes and uh, the spray. A lot of the employees, I know Kathy Williams out of the treasurer's office, and their people went out and she was able to get a lot of supplies that they were using their own supplies to keep the counter and the desk and the things that they were touching clean and safe uh, for their employees. And we've tried to discourage uh, employees from touching or using other things from one of your co-workers on there. Don't pick up their pencils, or don't go over to their desk, don't pick things up off of their desk. These are all the things that we want to be emphasizing uh, to do. Taking of the temperatures, as you know, when we first started out, we took the temperature from all of our employees as that they uh, came into the door. Those folks that have appointments in the different offices, we're taking the temperature and having them uh, wash their hands with uh, the alcohol wipe on there. And many of the things I'm talking about here today, we'll be putting into writing so that when we bring the full staff back in, we'll probably have something similar to a question and an answer, where we have questions and we'll have the answers down as to what do you do. Uh, HR has a lot of different things that uh, they will be responsible for and questions that we're beginning to get now uh, from some individuals on there. Um, also, the masks, as we said, we will be providing masks. We'll have those. Uh, I'm sure by the time we open back up uh, in the future, so everybody will have a mask be available and we'll certainly be encouraging you when you leave the building here and you're outside that you wear those masks at all the time. And to continue using video conferencing and telephone calls similar to what we're doing today so we do not have a lot of folks in meetings. We're also looking, we've been working with Kathy and Deborah and Debbie uh, in their three offices about sneeze screens and what is the best and most effective way to do that. A full screen across or workstations on there. So we're looking at that. Uh, all three of them have been very helpful to us in providing companies that are providing this. In Debbie and Kathy's case, uh, they even had a person come in uh, to give us some cost on customizing uh, some sneeze cards for those particular individuals. Uh, disinfecting on a weekly basis. One of the things when we bring back uh, all of our staff, what we'll be doing on uh, towards the end of the week will be completely between the courthouse and the annex. We'll go through disinfecting the entire premise all the way through. That doesn't mean that during the week you don't need to continue what you've been doing in keeping your counters clean and practicing all the different policies that we should do. We'll have in place there for you what you do if you find uh, one of your folks is uh, having a little temperature or you think they might not be feeling well, exactly what do you do? We'll have that on the answer sheet so you know exactly, of course you know what you're going to want to do. You're going to isolate them and you're going to want to send them home right away so they can't possibly infect anybody else. Uh, Mary Ann has been working uh, trying to secure um, infrared thermometers for us. Uh, she brought several in today. We will, by the time we open back up, uh, we will have infrared thermometers for every office. So you will have thermometers in your office so that anytime during the day 
Uh, you can take temperatures and we'll be recommending to you that you take them in the morning and again in, in the afternoon will be some of the things that we'll be suggesting uh, that you do on there. The other thing that you need to be concerned about is the mental health of all of our employees. Uh, this is a stressful time for a lot of folks. Some handle the stress different than other folks handle it. All of you are aware of the new avenues program that we have in place. We'll be emphasizing that, putting the phone numbers out, that if your folks have a certain stretch, could be financial, could be something else, that this is available to them, that they'll be able to utilize uh, this service. The other thing is, when are we going to reopen? We know that there's going to be a lot of questions about that. Uh, we'll know better after we hear what the governor has to say on, on Friday, but at the same time, uh, we can be more restrictive than what the governor says. So uh, we'll look at that and we'll be looking at where we are and where we're on the chart. If you follow the chart that's in here, you'll notice that we're still climbing like this. We haven't leveled off, we're still kind of going up here in uh, Wayne County. If you watch TV last night, you'll see that they are now going to open 20 new testing sites. And depending exactly how these sites work, uh, could be very, very beneficial to us because we could do more testing in the area. Richmond was fortunate to be one of 20 of the new testing sites, and they hope to do 30,000 tests per week. And so that's uh, going to be very, very important. Also, the turnaround on those tests is going to be 48 hours. So we'll get a response back very quickly on uh, an individual. So that'll give you kind of a little background of where we are, what we're thinking about, what we're looking at. And we don't have all the answers at this time, but we're trying to put them together that when we do open up, uh, that we'll be able to give you kind of a working sheet like this with all the questions that we can think of and the answers, whether they're in the HR department or whether they're on, on the medical side, that you'll be able to give that to all your employees on there, which can be very helpful uh, in some of the questions that, that they may have as they uh, begin to come back. But what we will do in consultation with Christine and with Dr. Jetmore, uh, we will look at all of our numbers to make a determination as to how quickly we will call our people back. And we'll certainly give each of you department heads uh, information and a little advance notice as to when we're going to do that. We're not just going to give you a phone call and say we're all coming back tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. So uh, you'll have enough notice to get out to all your folks to let them know that uh, we will be uh, returning into this area. I do anticipate though that uh, uh, Kathy uh, in the treasurer's office has done a real good, good job. Uh, we've chatted about this and uh, we may disagree a little bit. Uh, I'm sure she'd like to have it open so the CanX open so that the folks could get in tentatively at this time. Uh, we're not looking to open the annex up only by appointment for folks that may have in her particular case some question about a tax bill. She's done an excellent job in getting Wayne Bank as well as First Bank Richmond uh, to be able to take uh, payments uh, for property taxes and the property taxes are due now folks. I know there has been a delay but we would appreciate it if you would go ahead and, and pay your taxes uh, because we do need those dollars to be able to function and operate in county government. Uh, so. Uh, not only uh, do we have those facilities and those uh, banks also have branches out Cambridge City and different places, so it's more convenient. You do not need to come into this office to pay your taxes. At the same time, if you love to come down here, she, Kathy looked it up and we have this nice brown mailbox out in our uh, south parking lot of the annex, which you can drive right up to it. And, Pull the handle down and put your payment right in there. It's all taken care of and your canceled check will come back as your receipt. So they've done an excellent job in making it as convenient as possible for you uh, to be able to, to pay uh, your taxes. So what I'd like to do at this time is to kind of open it up for any discussions or questions medically that you might have. Uh, Christine, I'm sure we'll have 
some facts and numbers that she would like to give to you. I know the last few days we've had uh, some HR questions that are beginning to pick up. I can say, you know, we haven't had any for a while. Now all of a sudden we're starting to get questions from uh, em employees on there. So uh, we'll do that or, or I can have Christine make a few comments first. Christy, why don't you, do you have any quick comments you'd like to? Um, I, I, I can tell you that uh, cases across Indiana um, are still climbing at a slower rate than what we saw kind of in the surge. Um, Wayne County has uh, done a good job about um, keeping uh, our, our numbers relatively low in comparison. When you look at our numbers compared to our surrounding communities, we're still one of the lowest uh, counties at 5.5 per 10,000 uh, residents of, of Wayne County. Uh, if, you, if you look to some of our others, they're 18, 17. Uh, so we've, we've done a, a good job. And uh, the state, though, starting Thursday, last Thursday, had, has uh, started to allow clinical diagnosis of COVID to be reported. So when you look at the Indiana dashboard, you'll see um, the cases in Indiana are 36. So that's how many uh, laboratory confirmed cases of COVID-19 of Wayne County residents. But we've been woefully under testing in Indiana. And uh, so now they've allowed these clinical diagnosis. They haven't made those public yet, but I will tell you just yesterday I got 18 clinically diagnosed cases of COVID-19 and two laboratory confirmed. So there is a lot of COVID out in the community and, and uh, we like to explain to people when we're talking to people that you should interact with anyone as if they are COVID positive and shedding the virus. Um, I wear this mask to protect you and I would appreciate it if you would wear the mask to protect me. Um, when you look at uh, transmission rates, when people are wearing masks, when both people are wearing the mask, your transmission rate drops to about 1.3%. Uh, where if just the person who's not COVID positive wears a mask, you have about a 70% transmission rate. So while we're in this uh, phase of this disease, it's important that all of us are wearing masks when we're having interactions, whether it's at a grocery store, uh, at work, uh, when we do open back up, uh, we'll all be having masks on when we're outside of our office. So each one of us that has an individual office won't have to wear the mask when we're there by ourselves, but when there's interaction, we'll be wearing masks. Um, not sure what else you want me to go. That, that's good. I might mention one of the things that we looked at as we started to look at when we opened back up here, what, what is our exposure to COVID-19? If you look on the charts, you have low, medium, high, and very high. We're very fortunate that we're in the low category. And so that's good. And so as we look at different responses that we do, basically what OSHA and all the folks say for us is to keep your distance, wash your hands, and wear your mask is basically what they tell us to do in our category of low. But at the same time, I look at the chart on the demographics by age, and on the 50 to 59 is one of the highest rates, which is 19.4 and 60 to 69 is 19.4 also of uh, folks that have been in, infected. Uh, so, you know, that kind of fits into the age area that we are here, uh, but just by the fact that we're on the low side, I still take that very seriously as we look at all the different things that we're trying to do to make it safe for you as well as our employees when we bring them back. So do I have some questions? I know there's been a lot of concerns, a lot of talking. Anything specific that you might like to bring up that you want us to check up or look for or something we haven't thought about? Any suggestions you might have? Like I said, Cassie, Debbie, and, and Debbie, 
have brought concerns to us about the sneeze guards. We're working on that. We're looking at all that. Situations different for Debbie Berry over in the clerk's office than it is for Debbie in the recorder's office, and it's different for Kathy uh, in the treasurer's office due to the wide expanse that the treasurer has versus what the recorder has. Debbie kind of has more of the bank teller with uh, her counters she has. So that's different, and we're working on that, and we certainly will have all of those in place with something before we bring folks back in. So I'm sure there's got to be some questions out there, either some HR. Yes, Commissioner Deborah. House, this is Sheriff Randy Redder. Yes, Sheriff. Uh, my question is, I know that uh, about a week ago you were trying to require, or acquire uh, some testing uh, possibly for um, use for staff. I, I didn't know if you'd made any progress with that or not. Uh, not at this time. We're still working on that. It's possible okay. with these new testing sites that they're setting up. Yeah. We don't know what the parameter is on that. So at the moment, we're still on hold on that, Randy. I think for the the 20 sites, you still have to be symptomatic. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. We, you can be assured uh, that if once tests are available, we'll do our best to get them in. Sure. Uh, if, if you'd like to contact me later, I may have a, a possible resource for that. Okay. Be happy to do that. Uh, Deborah from the recorder's office. Is there any thought on uh, keeping the west door locked so that people are just going to be coming through the south door when we do open up? Uh, we have talked about uh, that. We'll have uh, to repeat that. I'm sure oh, we can. Um, her question was, when we open back up, are we going to keep the, all the doors closed with only the south entrance being open? And uh, we have been discussing that uh, early on prior to COVID-19 for security purposes. Our goal was to get our new security officer in place first. Uh, and he is here, Doug, Officer Bullock. And um, we've got him now set up with a nice desk out in there. And we're tentatively looking at the possibility when we open back up that we would not open that door, Deborah. But we haven't made that decision yet. Yes, sir. We know that masks are one of the best protections. Are you looking at setting a policy that staff and visitors would wear a mask while in the building? The question was that. Uh, are we going to require staff as well as visitors to wear masks uh, in the office at all times? And the answer to that, at this point, uh, we've made no decision on that. Uh, tentatively, what I've been doing, uh, when I get into my office, I take my mask off, but if somebody comes in to talk to me or I leave it, I kind of put it on because I'll run into people in the hallway or something like that. We haven't made that decision. We will be making a recommendation on that, though. The health department would support a policy that had everyone wearing masks. Okay. Uh, Kathy. I just have a quick question. We have public terminals in our area, and I know I've mentioned to Steve about moving those out in the hallway. So are you making a list so that you could move any of that time to think all at the same time rather than I want this and Kimberly needs something and Debbie mm -hmm. needs something and so uh, we can try to keep those public terminals out of our office area. We do, uh, um, anybody that says anything to us, Steve and I put on our list and we do have your two terminals on our list. I can tell you right now basically if we look at that we're not leaning to putting those terminals out into the hallway and having folks out in, into the hallway on there, but we haven't made a final decision on that. We've looked at where you have those in your office, and uh, depending on the folks that utilize those, uh, there certainly is the six to seven foot space between where you have your closest desk and where somebody would be working there. But we haven't made a final decision on that yet, Cassie, but it's on our list. And we'd have that done prior to opening the building up if we were going to do it. Uh, Ken? Yes, sir. Uh, Roger? 
if you could uh, repeat the question to the people in the audience. Oh, I'm sorry. Hear them. Uh, the question so, on uh, was from the treasurer. Uh, she has a computer in her office with uh, clients will come in and it's in probably 10 feet from where the counter is on the uh, east side of her office. She's looking at the possibility of moving uh, those computers out into the hallway and having the folks that would use them out in the hallway. That was her question and it is on our list to look at. Uh, Tentatively in looking at it, we were not leaning towards doing that, uh, putting uh, offices out into the hallway. Another question. I'll let you think about it a second and I'll call on HR um, and she can mention a couple of the things that we've been getting uh, some questions on. Um, previously, I sent out an email around the 1st of April regarding the Family Medical Leave Act and the expansion on that. So I just want to remind you, I'm, I'm, I am receiving some activity on that from the employees. It is Family Medical Leave Act, it is HIPAA protected, and it really needs to flow through HR as any other FMLA event or request. Um, so please have your employees give me a call because each situation needs to be dealt with on an individual basis. I also, part of this expansion is for the emergency family and medical leave will be for child care. There's some guidelines regarding child care and I'm dealing with one right now. Uh, so we're going through that exercise and seeing if uh, that individual qualifies on what's going on with their in, uh, individual issue. But I did place a call to the Richmond YMCA today uh, because there is a child care program that is available. It uh, originally was for, um, on the medical side, more read employees. It has now been opened up to essentials and essential employees. So we do qualify for that. Uh, the age is 4 to 12. It is at the Richmond YMCA, South J Street. The fee is $75. Um, I do have a flyer, or if you have any way to encourage them to Google uh, Richmond YMCA, go to their website, and there is an enrollment packet that must be filled out. It's, it's about five or six pages long. But there is child care that is available uh, for the employees of Wayne County. So do you have any questions regarding the family medical leave and how that works or any issues just please contact me I would say don't hesitate if you have an idea or a question uh, to give me a call stop me in the hallway whatever let us know uh, any ideas whatever you might have like Kathy Debbie and both Debbies have done to us so that we can begin to do the research we need to do to look at the different items that are available and how we can do that and how long it'll take us to get it all in place and everything. So I'm sure maybe when you leave today you'll think of something. So send us an email on that so that we can begin now uh, to look at that. And uh, so nothing else you can think of. Yes, sir. Go ahead. This is Roger. Yeah, Roger. Do you have a list, do we have a list in the county of what establishes essential personnel? Uh, a list as such, no. I think as we move forward uh, in bringing back people, uh, a list of essential personnel that needs to be on duty would be helpful, especially with the HR questions as far as uh, who establishes uh, essential personnel and uh, who are they. Okay, I've got that. Thank you. Anybody else? Anything at all? Nothing, nothing. Yes, Kathy. Can just, for, just, just a minute, Kathy. Go ahead. Maybe for Christine, the benches that are out here that are upholstered, 
are those an issue with the public sitting on those and getting up and should those maybe be moved and just some plastic chairs or metal chairs put in the hallways for the time being once, once we open to the public all right her question is uh, the benches that we have in the hallway that are cloth covered whether or not those should be removed so that nobody can uh, sit on those and she kind of asked Christine that yeah um, a good question um, it's a, a respiratory disease um, it, it probably would I mean plastic would be better they could be easier sanitized you know throughout the day um, but I don't know how much transmission you would have on on those benches that they would be uh, considered a high um, priority thing to to move I don't know how much people I, I'm not in this building enough to know uh, the time, we have a lot of people that sit on those do you yeah yes. a lot of elderly I'm hoping the elderly stay home you're and not, don't come out when we open it. <laughs> you're probably not going to find those elderly folks in here unless you've set up an appointment with them, Kathy. Would be oh, my they guess. want to come, I will tell you. They call us every day. Are you open yet? They well, want to come in and pay their taxes. You so should I'm suggest to those folks that they go sure. to one of the branches at the bank or to use your box out there that they don't need to come inside. Yeah, I would. I would really, yeah. really yeah. encourage the elderly to use a, a, a different form than coming into public buildings. Even, even if we open up the you know establishments and the malls and and all of this stuff, even when we opened up the lobbies to the restaurants, does that mean that that's a good thing to do? If I go and there's seven people in a lobby, I'm not going to go in there uh, because I know how it's transmitted, you know. So just because things are open back up doesn't mean we want the community to flock out there. These should only be essential. There's no other option, especially for an elderly person, to come in here. There's got to be a better way to service the most vulnerable in our community. And coming into these public buildings is not the best option for them. Yes. Kind of on that front, when this first started, the first week or two, as we were still seeing probation clients before the sort of the building restriction, we basically categorized everything that we did from clerical duties to seeing probation um, clients to court as to critical matters, meaning things that could not be dealt with outside of a face-to-face -face interaction, um, non-critical, and then just non-essential, things that could kind of be put on the shelf. I would almost encourage government or, or the buildings to look at something similar that we can all operate under some parameters as to what things can a person only do in a building if not only just, again, to kind of extend us out past this, um, this, this situation that we're in. Uh, the speaker was Corey George uh, from the probation department. He talked about in their office how they uh, had uh, critical things that only could be done in the office, those that could be done outside the office, and that it would be a good idea for us to establish some parameters for the whole county. Uh, they might vary by individual offices. I can see a difference in Corey's. I can see a difference in uh, uh, Kathy's, in the treasurer's office. Uh, and, and as you have folks trying to check tax bills, you have the treasurer, you got the auditor, and the assessor that all three get involved. In that so it could be different but I think that's a good idea Corey. Ken, Ken this is Chuck Todd. I had a question you alluded to earlier that okay that you intended to give us you you intended to give us a heads up not just like call us and hey the next day we're we're opening back up to the public uh, business as usual. Do you anticipate any kind of time frame of trying to give us what you think you'll give us time frame wise to know when we're to try to shift and go back into not the percentages you provided us to try to have our mm -hmm. workforce at and those things, would that be something that I would, would hope, hope to give us, for example, yeah. at least a week notice? Or well, I would hope to be able to give you a two weeks notice, Chuck, um, yeah. two weeks in advance as to what we're going to do. Um, 
you know, as, as this changes and we meet uh, Dr. Gentmore, Christine and myself and the mayor and usually Reed Hospital, as we get together and talk about where are we at this point and as we try and look down the road, my goal would be to give you at least a two week notice and I know for the courts uh, scheduling and everything, I, even that's a short period of time for you. But uh, that would be my goal to be able to give you at least two weeks before we start uh, really moving things or changing some things. All right. Thank you. Uh huh. Very good. What else? Anything else, Kim? Yes. Okay. Christine, anything else you can think of? Uh, why don't you, while we're on TV, promote your um, uh, mask giveaway oh. that you've got coming up? Yeah. yeah. Look right yeah. into the camera there and tell them what you got coming up. <laughs> Hello, I'm Christine. Uh, Saturday, uh, we are doing a mask giveaway uh, for the community as we kind of are expecting the governor to open up uh, some parts of the economy um, soon uh, if not this weekend um, you know pretty pretty soon so we've had a lot of uh, masks donated to the health department and uh, we thought that this would be uh, we could kill a lot of uh, birds with this one stone by giving away these masks first of all we can let the public know how to get to the health department because where is the health department we're 100 South 5th Street uh, right at the corner of A and 5th uh, you'll find the health department and in our parking lot we're going to have a drive-through uh, mask giveaway and that's from 10 a.m. to 11 or 10 a.m. to 1 okay, p.m. Yeah, 10 to 1. Uh, but you can check our Facebook page and, and find those exact times because you caught me on the spot here and, and uh, I've got a lot going on and so if right. those times are wrong. 10 to 1. 10 to 1. Ah, I was right. Yeah, All right, 10 really to good. 1. Uh, so it, it did a few things. It allowed us to exercise the capability of uh, it would it be feasible to do a drive-through um, testing site or inoculation or, or what have you at that place. So we're going to be doing some test runs of, of setting up different things. It allowed us to exercise our communications. Uh, so the health department reached out to the EMA. We reached out to um, the uh, county uh, dispatch or the county sheriffs and the uh, Richmond police and so it's a coordinated effort of watching all of these groups interact together and and how we can do traffic flows and a lot of things so from 10 to 1 on Saturday uh, the mask will be limited so it will be as soon as the masks are done we'll be uh, out of mask and the the uh, clinic will shut down so okay very good um, any last comments anybody wants to make or anything? If not, I, I thank you all for coming. Uh, if you have any suggestions, any ideas, anything, per, certainly send them in to us. Send us an email, call me or stop me. Uh, let us know. We, we're welcome any suggestions or ideas that you have uh, so we can begin to get ready for when we do open. The time is coming and we are going to be opening. It's just a matter of when. Uh, that's going to help and so thank you all for coming thank you for calling in on the phone also and if there's nothing else we'll adjourn by general consent <laughs>